Yeah, you you also mentioned. Uh, I have a couple more questions for Grady, and I'll open it back up. You mentioned that these different governments are collaborating increasingly with each other. Can you can you kind of describe how that happens? I mean, is this an issue of reach? Is this an issue of convenience, or is it part uh, like part of increased geopolitical cooperation that's more formal, like where you see Russia and China getting together? Is it is it more institutionalized like that, or is this thing just kind of always been happening and just kind of increases? I mean, you do have long established security ties, for example, in a region that I focus on in Eurasia uh, between Russia and uh, other Central Asian governments, which used to be a part of the uh, Soviet Union. Uh, and following the collapse of the Soviet Union, a lot of these security ties uh, were still there and the, some of the officials were still there. So they had that they had that joint experience and history together to crack down on activism within the uh, the CSTO, Collective Security Treaty Organization, within that territory. Also in the Middle East, uh, we're seeing increasing cooperation among members of the Arab League. Uh, there's, this, uh, there's this body called the Arab Interior Ministers Council uh, in which these different countries in the, in, uh, the region uh, funnel Noted, they're not red notices like Interpol, but they basically uh, have like wanted, they, they issue uh, wanted notices for individuals who are in other countries in the region. And over the last year, we've seen several cases of people traveling to, let's say, Jordan or another country being stopped at airports and being sent back to their uh, origin country. Uh, when it comes to China, I think uh, it can, it, it can exercise its influence, geopolitical influence, and uh, one boat, one belt, one road uh, interest in different host country and different host countries to uh, gain leverage when it comes to these sorts of uh, sorts of uh, exchanges and security interests. I think most of the the uh, more physical like uh, cases when it like kidnappings, deportations, detentions occur in neighboring authoritarian states, Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asian countries, especially uh, are, are a focal point of this uh, pursuit. I mean, I think Laos, Cambodia, these countries are often willing to let in, uh, are often willing to collaborate with uh, Chinese security officials to uh, hunt down journalists or other dissident figures that China wants returned or silenced. So I think it's a mixture of like long established and well-built security ties. Uh, but also, I mean, there are there's there are institutional structures on a regional level besides Interpol that allow this uh, problem to persist and makes it easier for some authoritarian states to collaborate. 